Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. This video is not going to be geared toward people who are already selling on Amazon. So if you already are selling on Amazon, this video is not for you. So just skip it right now. What I am doing is I'm going to do a crash course for those of you who are just trying to figure out what on earth is Amazon and how do I make money selling on Amazon. And specifically, this crash course is gonna cover the Amazon wholesale business model. Now, there are three business models you can do when selling on Amazon. There's retail arbitrage, private label, and the wholesale model. I recommend understanding and learning all three of them so you can determine which one's right for you. I have chosen to sell doing wholesale. I also do some private label and I highly recommend doing the wholesale business model because I think it is quite frankly the easiest way to build wealth online, at least initially. If you are somebody who doesn't have a huge budget, you're somebody who doesn't have a whole lot of experience in marketing or working with designers or building a supply chain, fortunately for you, you, selling using the wholesale business model does not require these skills. Doing wholesale will be a bit easier and is much better for getting your toes wet and generating some cash flow and income while maintaining whatever job or whatever it is that you do right now. So my goal once again is to give you a crash course walking you from A all the way to Z on Amazon wholesale. So buckle up and let's get right into this video. So this might be the first time you've ever heard of the Amazon wholesale business model and you might be confused as to what it is and how this business works. So let me explain real quick. In the retail market, there are the manufacturers, there's the brands, there's the distributors, also known as wholesalers, and there's you, the retailer. We are using amazon.com as our platform to offer our products as retailers. We don't have a brick and mortar store. We are simply selling these items online. Now, in most situations, brands, distributors, manufacturers, and retailers are all separate. It's very rare that a company owns the manufacturing, the brand, the distribution, and the retail outlet. Most companies do not own the entire channel. As retailers in this business model, our goal is to make as many relationships with major brands and distributors of brands as possible so that we can fill our inventory at Amazon with products that we purchase at wholesale price. Now, there's a few things you're absolutely going to have to have in order to even get started building these relationships. First and foremost, you're going to want to organize as a business. So you're gonna to wanna to get an LLC, you're gonna be an S Corp or whatever way you decide to organize. Next, you're gonna to have to have a vendor's license, also known as a retailer's permit or retailer's license, depending on what state you're in. This is what will give you the ability to approach a brand or approach a distributor and buy at wholesale price. The last thing that you're going to absolutely have to have is an EIN number from the IRS. This is gonna be your business's tax ID number. Once you have those things, you will be ready to rock and roll. Now that we have those three items out of the way, we're actually gonna head over to our local bank and open a business bank account. And the reason I suggest doing this is because if you decide to open a seller account in the name of that business that you created, well, Amazon's gonna require that you provide them with a bank account that matches the business name. Not only that, but you're going to wanna to get a credit card as well in the name of the business. So there's a few things Amazon will require for a professional account, one and two being the business bank account and that credit card, but also you're gonna to need to provide a valid phone number and that tax ID that we talked about earlier. Once you have those four items, you will be able to get a professional seller account and we'll begin searching for products and filling our store. Now, in order to run a successful Amazon wholesale business, there are three things that we have got to focus on and get right. That is obviously first, we want to fill our Amazon store with as many profitable products as possible. And we have to find the distributors that carry those products. So we're gonna try and find as many distributors as possible. And last, 
we've got to do a good job managing our cash flow. Now, this is a very important step that a lot of people don't really understand. In this video, I am going to be showing you exactly how to find profitable products. I'll also be showing you how to find the distributors that carry those products. And lastly, I'll teach you how to manage your cash flow appropriately, which will allow you to scale your business even if you have little to no upfront cash. In order to find as many great products to sell on Amazon as possible, there's first a few things that we must understand about Amazon listings in general. Amazon.com has a ranking system in which they rank each and every listing on a scale from one being the very best to the last and worst listing, which could be 10 or 20 million being the very worst. This ranking system is called Amazon's best seller rank. Now, based off the bestseller rank and the category that the listing's in, using a tool called fbatoolkit.com, we can determine whether a listing sells, say, 10 units a day or whether it sells hundreds. Now, we're gonna wanna keep this bestseller rank in mind when we are choosing products to sell because we're looking to have some form of consistency once we begin selling. The next thing that we need to know is is this product going to be profitable? Well, Amazon has a whole lot of fees and since we're using their fulfillment by Amazon service, we'll be charged quite a bit of fees and we need to know what our costs are gonna be so we can determine if we can make a profit. So we're gonna download a tool called the Helium 10 Chrome extension, which is gonna do several things for us. First off, it's gonna allow us to analyze how profitable a listing is based on the price that we can get the product for from our distributor. It's also going to give us a history of the sales rank and it's going to give us a price history which will help us avoid buying when a price is high and then later when competition comes in and drives the price down selling it at a lower price that might not be profitable now just because you might have the lowest price or the competition might have the lowest price does not mean that all the sales are going to go to those who have the lowest price in fact there is something called the buy box, which we really need to pay attention to here. The buy box is essentially the add to cart button on each and every listing. And only one seller is going to be winning the buy box at a time. Now the buy box does rotate and it's important to realize that if you're using Amazon's fulfillment service, you will be able to be priced higher than those who don't use Amazon's fulfillment service and still be winning the buy box over them. You can be priced as much to 20% higher and still be winning the buy box. Now what you have to realize is that almost every sale goes to the person who's winning the buy box. So our goal is to get as much buy box rotation time as possible. So the way we're gonna do that is by being an FBA seller, having a competitive price when we're competing with other FBA sellers, having great storefront reviews, trying to get that storefront review count up as high as possible, being in good standing with Amazon.com, buying enough inventory to make sure that it gets to warehouses throughout the country, and of course, trying to avoid competing with Amazon.com. Now, when we're evaluating a potential listing, we wanna make sure that we're actually gonna be able to win the buy box at a profitable price. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a tool called Keepa, which is just like Helium 10, except it will show us the buy box price history. Now, once again, Helium 10 only showed us the price history. Keepa is gonna show us historically where the buy box was and how it fluctuated over time. It's also gonna give us information about what type of seller has been selling on this listing historically. Has it been Amazon? Has it just been fulfillment by merchant sellers? Or has it been FBA sellers? We obviously are trying to avoid listings where Amazon is a seller. However, Keepa will show us that if Amazon is a seller, have they shared the buy box historically. Now we're also interested in whether we are the first FBA seller to a listing. If historically a listing was just sold by FBM sellers, well, we're gonna know that we can come in and actually raise the price and have the buy box 
solely to ourselves. We're also gonna be looking at the sales rank history using Keepa to try and identify whether there are seasonality trends with the listing that we're looking at. If there is, we obviously want to avoid making a purchase from our distributor when the season is coming close to its end and we want to try and stock up on our product right before the season begins and buy just enough to last us through the season. To recap what makes a great listing, we want to find Amazon listings that are going to be profitable for us, that have a great sales rank with great consistent sales rank history so that we can plan our inventory purchases accurately. We also want to make sure that the price history is consistent so that we're not buying when the price is high and then later when competition either comes back in or comes in for the first time, we're not selling at a lower price later. We also want to make sure that we're able to win the buy box, so we're going to use Keepa to find out who's been winning the buy box historically and whether we have a chance at winning the buy box at a profitable price. And last, we're going to look at seasonality trends using either Keepa or Helium 10 to make sure that we're not making purchases at the end of a season, rather we're buying at the beginning of the season. Now that we know how to identify what a good listing looks like, we need to find as many of these listings as possible in the most economical way, which is why we're going to use Helium 10, which allows us to see information within the listing without actually having to click in it. So when we search for whatever brand or product we're looking for, Helium 10 is going to provide us with the sales rank, the number of sellers, and the type of seller on the outside of the listing. This will allow us to quickly scroll through all the results and identify the listings that look desirable to us. Now, we want to avoid listings where there are too many sellers, and we also want to avoid listings where there are not many FBA sellers, as these could be private label listings. Secondly, we don't want to sell on listings where Amazon is a seller most of the time, so we are going to skip listings where we see that Amazon is a seller. And finally, if we do find listings where there are only FBM sellers, this could be a good opportunity for us to come in and own the buy box. Once we find a good listing, we're actually going to go inside that listing and try and do more product research by observing the sellers that are on the listing. We are going to specifically focus on sellers who I like to refer to as like kind sellers. That is, they are using Amazon FBA just like you and I, and they're smaller just like you and I. So we're looking specifically for sellers that have less than 10,000 storefront reviews. We're going to go into their storefront and we are going to observe all of the listings that they have found and piggyback off the work that they've already done. This will be a gold mine for us in terms of finding great quality listings. Once we've found a few good listings, it's now important to shift our focus to searching for the distributors that carry the products on those listings. Now, once we land a distributor account, we're gonna get a price list that's gonna have thousands of different products and a bunch of different brands, whichever brands are carried by that distributor on this list. And we're gonna use this list to try and find more listings on Amazon to sell these products. So we're gonna start with the product list and we're gonna trace the items back to Amazon using the methods using Helium 10 and storefront stocking as a way of finding these listings. Now, another great way to find listings, starting with the product list, is by using a tool called Tactical Arbitrage. This will allow you to automatically search for the items that are on that product list on Amazon.com without you physically having to do anything. Tactical Arbitrage will do it for you. I'm not gonna go into the details of how this software works in this video, but if you would like, after watching this course, watch this video here where I go into it in more depth. Now that we've discussed all the ways that you can find listings on Amazon.com, we need to figure out how to even find distributors in the first place. Before we discuss how to find distributors, we first need to determine what kind of distributors we're looking for and whether they are good quality. 
Now we are looking for distributors of major brands, not generic distributors of just everyday products. Once again, we're selling on listings that already are attracting customers because they are of major brands. We're not trying to do any marketing ourselves. We want the marketing that the brands have done to attract customers for us. So once again, we're looking for distributors of major brands. Second, it's important to realize that most distributors do not offer good pricing. In fact, you might be able to go into Walmart or Best Buy or whatever retail store and find pricing that's just as good as the pricing that the distributor you found offers. So it's important to find distributors that offer good pricing. Now you need to realize it's extremely hard to find a good distributor. It's not going to happen right away. And if it does, then you are lucky because it took me months before I found a great distributor. You also need to realize that once you find that good distributor, it could mean tens of thousands or even hundreds of thousands of dollars of profit. So do not get discouraged if you can't find one right away. Keep looking because it will be worth it. Now in this video, we're gonna discuss three ways to find distributors, but you need to know that in this video and this video, I offer two other great ways for finding distributors. Also, join the Facebook group in the link below because I offer additional ways to find distributors there. Once again, this is the hardest part. So if you're armed with so many different ways to find distributors, it's only going to help you. So let's get right into the first method and I'm gonna teach you how to find good quality distributors. The first way that I'm gonna show you to look for distributors is using a tactic I like to call the Boolean logic method. Here we're gonna use certain words such as and, not, or or both to try and pinpoint keywords that we know are on almost every distributor website. Now we're gonna utilize Google when we're doing these searches and we're gonna go first over to amazon.com to find listings that sell very well and have name brand products. Once we find those listings, we're simply gonna take the brand and create a Google search that looks something like this. Once we do that, we are going to just simply hit search and sift through the Google results and try and find websites that look like distributor websites. You should know that it is a distributor website based on the verbiage that we see. It should say distributor for or apply here or vendors. You will know that this is a distributor website. Once we've determined that this is a distributor website, we're simply going to apply for an account. Now you might have to call somebody up or you can simply complete the application and send it in via email or fax. It all depends on each site. So this is the first method and once again, we call it the Boolean logic method. The next method is what I like to call the brand website method. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start by trying to find potentially great listings on Amazon. The only thing that we're gonna be missing is the pricing, obviously, because we don't have the distributor yet. So we're looking once again for listings that have fewer FBA sellers, great sales rank, and good price history. Once we've identified a few of those listings, we're simply going to look at the brand on those listings and we're gonna to go to the brand's website and see if they happen to list their distributors. Now, keep in mind that a lot of brands don't list their distributors on their websites, but there are a few that do and when they do, typically they list several of their distributors and we can apply for those distributors and have access to not only those brands, but all the other brands that the distributors carry. So this is a great method for finding additional distributors and finding a distributor for a brand that we've already found on Amazon. 
The last method that I'm going to teach you in this video is what I like to call the Wholesale Central Method. Now here, we're gonna go over to a website called wholesalecentral.com and sift through all the different categories that they have listed there to search for distributors that have big name brands. Now, one thing you need to realize about this site is that most of the distributors that are listed here are no good at all. So we're gonna have to sift through a bunch of them and we're gonna use the command find or the control find button in order to find distributors that specifically say in their listings that they carry brand name products. So once again, we're gonna go through each and every category that is listed here on wholesalecentral.com and just go through and try and determine whether we have found ourselves a legit wholesaler. You might have to apply to several before you find yourself a good wholesaler. Now, this site, some might say, is no good for finding wholesalers at all, but I can tell you, because I have actually found some of my top distributors here, that it is actually a great place to find distributors if you look hard enough. Now that wraps up this section of the video, and it's important to know that there's a lot of different other ways to find distributors, and you're going to want to watch all of my YouTube videos where I discuss how to find distributors and join that Facebook group where I even list several more ways to find distributors of brand name products. Now that we know how to identify good listings, find a lot of them, and find the distributors that carry the products for those listings, we wanna shift our focus to how do we scale this Amazon wholesale business as quickly and efficiently as possible. This is where the element of risk is going to come into play. But like in any business, you are going to have risk. The question is, is how well can we manage this risk so that the outcome is what we want? <laughs> Well, the great thing is Amazon.com has so much data. Once again, we know how often a listing sells. We can see the price history. We know whether we're profitable on that listing. We can see the competition. There's so much data that we have that it's hard to not be able to calculate and limit our risk. Now, in order to scale, we need to manage our cash flow very well, and we also have to manage our risk very well at the same time. In other words, we have two objectives. We want to consistently stretch our dollar as far as possible with each and every inventory purchase, while at the same time, we want to be cognizant of overbuying inventory on any one purchase, which will prevent us from possible opportunities in the future if our money or our cash is tied up in slow moving inventory. So our goal here is to try and get account terms with our distributors. That is, they're gonna give us, like a credit card, 30 days to pay off an account with them. Now, ideally, they'll allow you to pay off that account with a credit card, which will give you 30 to 45 more days to not have cash come out of your account. What this does is it gives you around 60 to 75 days to purchase your inventory, send it to Amazon, sell through it, and have the funds deposited from Amazon into your bank account, hopefully before your bills do. If you're able to do this successfully, then by definition, you can grow without limit. This is what I mean when I say successfully managing cash flow. What we need to focus on here is not overbuying inventory. We want to make sure that we are only buying enough inventory that we can sell through and have the funds back into our bank account before that bills do. Now, in 2020, things have changed. Amazon has become slower at receiving inventory, and it's taken a little bit longer to get your inventory in and sold and the money back into your account. So, before 2020, I would recommend buying no more than two to two and a half weeks worth of inventory at a time. Now I recommend buying no more than a week and a half inventory at a time if you're trying to scale in this way. Now keep in mind that managing your cash flow and scaling in this way is for those who don't have a whole lot of upfront cash and are just beginning. As time goes on, you should be able to accumulate more cash or if you're starting off with a lot of cash, you're gonna wanna purchase more inventory at once as you want to make sure you're spending less time 
placing reorders, and more time searching for more products and growing your business. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure you're taking advantage of professional services like sales feed software, maybe a prep center, or stuff like that to help you get away from the monotonous details of the business as you grow and spend more time on your business growing it. These are things that you're going to focus on more and more and more as your cash begins to accumulate. Now, if you have no money at all and you're willing to take a little bit of a risk, you might wanna consider getting a 16 to 18 month interest-free credit card loan. Now, keep in mind, the key here is interest-free. We do not wanna pay interest at all when we are running this business. We also wanna make sure that we're not destroying our FICO score at the same time. So use discretion when opening these loans and keep in mind that I actually started my business with an interest-free credit card loan. So I can speak firsthand that this is a way that you can successfully start and grow your business. I was able to turn $6,000 of an interest-free credit card loan into a substantial amount within 18 months, and I don't regret doing it at all. Now, just because I had great results does not mean you're going to, as your set of decisions might be much different than mine, and even if you did choose to do the same exact things that I did, the outcome still could be different. So make sure you are using discretion and wisdom when you are starting a business on credit. Now to recap the three important keys to focus on in order to have success in this business, you need to make sure you are finding a lot of listings, you need to find a lot of distributors that carry the products for those listings, you need to effectively manage your cash flow and scale your business. Now, one other thing that I did not mention, and this is obvious, it's for any business that you get into, you have to be consistent. You can't just do a thing here and there, you have to consistently work at this, and trust me, you will have success. Do not give up, keep learning, keep trying, keep pushing, you will have success. It took me almost a year before I landed on all these things that I just taught you. And guess what? Within a year from learning these things, I was able to quit my nine to five and basically live the way that I wanted and work on my terms and my schedule. So I want the same for you. If you are interested in growing this business, please join the Facebook group in the link below. There is some information that I did not include in this video just because I didn't have time. It basically fills the gaps. You receive the meat and potatoes here. If you want the whole dinner, everything, once again, to fill the gaps, join that Facebook group. There's a free course there. Also a great community where we're gonna answer any questions you might have to help you start, grow, and scale your business. Thank you for watching this video. If you're not subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and smash that like button, and we will see you very shortly in the next video. Thanks for watching.